Proposed Problem Property Ordinances Workshopped. We've got details on this episode of Barnstable Today. It's Friday, January 11th, 2013. I'm Sarah Colvin. Town councillors sat at the table in the Selectman's Conference Room here at Town Hall for two and a half hours last night, working together to modify and refine the five proposed problem property ordinances. In a nutshell, the ordinances are designed to help town officials and police better deal with chronic problem properties, whether it be an issue of multiple police calls, violent crimes, blight, noise, etc. We bring you today some highlights from Thursday night's long session. I got it. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Keith McDonald, how do you feel about that <laughs> number? Um. You know, back, excuse me, back when all started, you know, it, 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 it began because of the level of violence that was happening in and around downtown Hyannis going back two and a half, three years ago. We had to meet the Hyannis Civic Association. They broke down the subcommittees to deal, deal with that. And once the committee came up with these ordinances to deal with the level of violence that was reoccurring in certain instances, and that's why we came up with the two and the three, because you know if, if we spend a lot of time doing a heavy narcotics investigation, you know, and we have to do two search warrants on the same house, that's a problem house. If we have a house with multiple shootings, you know, I mean, we can't do anything until there's been four instances of document shootings at a house. That's why we went for the lower number, mm -hmm. you know, two or three to deal with the more serious crime, which is what the intent was way back when, was to deal with that, that level of violence. So it was low because we wanted to deal with, with that severity of crime, you know. And, and again, I mean, we do have the police, police discretion. And again, we talked about those four or five houses. Those were the ones we want to concentrate. That, that, mm -hmm. that really affected the quality of life of everybody. That's, that's what this is for. You know, if you have a house that's affecting negatively the quality of life of everybody in that neighborhood, it has to be addressed. And you're talking four or five, that's a lot. Or if you want four or five with one instance of violence, right, that's then, then that would be acceptable. Yeah. That's, you know. Deputy Chief Tanish, you can approach. Well, I was going to say, when you're, we're talking about the valid complaints and the word incident, if you go back to uh, uh, section two, right above that, Upon finding a valid complaint, police shall make a record of the incident. So the incident refers to a valid complaint. Mm -hmm. So I don't think you have to keep putting valid complaint down in the third word. It refers to such an incident. Councilor Cherigotis and then Councilor Cote. What the Chief was saying, I think what we've seen is that instances of the, the most, you know, the worst violence, the, the crimes that we can think of that have occurred, um, Jeff Wayne, the one, the shooting over here in, in Hyannis, those are the single events that happens. Someone's killed. It's, it's horrendous. But the people who, the perpetrators are gone. That's it. They're not going to be there the next day. They're going to move. Mm -hmm. So, well, hopefully that's what happens if you, if you can find out who it is. So I understand the, the need for an immediate, you know, I don't know how we word it. I don't know how we put it in. But if you have that level of violence, then something should be happen. We shouldn't have to have three or four of those at one address. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you get other types of complaints, and, they, and, it, and it could be anything. I mean, it could be. Um, Party. But how does the law address that right now? If there's a violent event, isn't well, there something? If you can pin it on them, you arrest them, and they're out of the scene. Yeah, I would think that that you know. should be. Isn't? I'm sorry, you were going to say something. I was referring to the chief or somebody that could give me a response. I said that, you know, what happens right now when, when, when there's a shooting or whatever? I mean, isn't that already sort of addressed? Uh, where we don't have to put a separate... Uh, it, it is addressed, but there are houses in the town where we've done multiple search warrants on the exact same address. You know, we, we do the best we can. People are arrested but they have the right to make bail, and they're, they're back out again. You know, or somebody else takes up shopping the same, same address. I have a, a, board, a state statute to pass out. If there is criminal activity on rental property, landlord has recourse outside of the summary process. Um, proceedings. I've seen some landlords use it. Um, and it, you'll see, it's a whole, it's a pretty old statute if you, if you see how they discuss the crimes in, in what order. Yeah, I've <laughs> right. yeah, used yeah. it myself. Yeah. This, this, you don't have to go through the summary process. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. mm. um, 
you can go immediately to court. I, I know there is a concern that landlords who are moving good faith will not be able to evict tenants. It takes years. I don't believe that even under this normal civil process case. But if there is serious criminal activity going on, there is a, a quick, a much more expeditious resource available. And it was discussed, if I may, Madam Chairman, it was discussed at the previous meeting that this stuff can be delayed. The summary process in Bostonville County is summary. I've represented many tenants and landlords, mostly, who would pay, and uh, it's true. You just, you know, you're, it's quick. Even now you have a right to a jury trial, it's still scheduled fast, and uh, it's a speedy hearing. There's no delays allowed. It's in this county, we don't have a housing court, and the judges currently who sit of uh, understanding of the situations, and uh, you know, even when you appeal to superior court, which is very rare because you have to post a high bond to do that, it still will only delay it less than a month. Mm -hmm. You'll get a hearing in front of the superior court judge, and it'll be held frivolous, and it'll be thrown out. So it's really not. A, a delay tactic that's going to work for long. Just Can I just, isn't. I just need, need to. I'm so joking. I, I, what I think we get past when we're getting into these discussions about who we rent to or who the rent, all we're doing is moving to find the landlord. How the landlord handles that is, is really, we're not telling people that they have to evict people. The landlord is fine and the landlord then has to deal with the consequences on their own. So I, I think we, that conversation went probably further than is necessary for us. Yeah. Okay, we're back to our numbers now. Yeah. It does kind of fall into the whole unintended unintended right. consequences thing, which, you know, we have to take into account because they're, you know, it's not against the law to own and rent property. It's not against the law to make money off a of rental property. So to, you know, I mean, I believe in the, I believe in the ordinance, and I, especially reading what, what Ruth just handed out and listening to Councillor Rugo, I believe that there is an expeditious or, okay, expeditious snail mail kind of way of handling it all. So, you know, I don't believe it ought to be a, a reason to to not not go forward. But, it, you know, we do, I think we do have to look at it. Why should we be more lenient to the minority that are, that are causing these problems? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't right, agree. or the There's people that aren't reading their mail. Yeah, I mean, there's we're really down to you know, a consensus here, and I think we need to, you know, feel where we're going with this. And uh, it seems like some feel it should be two and four, others of us feel, and I'm one who feels it should be three and four. I I, I believe in giving people uh, a little more, a little more time to to show that they they're cooperating. Um, it still will address the same issue, but I think we need to get a some better understanding of where we're at on this. I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement. I, I had that number and I was looking at 2, 3, and, and, but I, I, I happen to agree with you that I, I think 3 and 4. And dovetailing on that since um, Council anyway, that's where I asked was. me what legally, I think the higher the number the more defensible because right. the premise of this ordinance is that these are chronic properties that right. need more than the run-of-the-mill police attention. We've spent 2,500 2, calls to a given area, the number was in a given area. So the, I think the, the higher number of um, thresholds, I think, would be more defensible. The candidate and then um, Vice President Rapp. I agree with the three and four, but I also think what Councillor Cote mentioned is an excellent idea to have if we have such a list of, of these landlords, to send this ordinance out as past whenever iteration that serves as an additional notice. Supposedly they're re required to register, but whether or not they are. That's yeah, well, well, you know, they're not part of the problem. Obviously, we've just shown a very small portion of the evening. Councilor has worked very well together and will continue this, the discussion at a town council meeting later this month. Meanwhile, you can watch the entire two and a half hour workshop meeting online. Head to town.barnstable.ma.us and click on video on demand. With Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Colvin.